so we move on from system virtualization to storage virtualization so the four parts of this um, particular module are what is the is system interface what is the storage interface so basically there are terms like SCSI and fiber channel that I will explain what they are and what is meant by storage area network how do you virtualize them and then what is the difference between SAN and NAS so in the data centers you don't put disk inside a computer just like you do on your desktop internal disks are not very helpful because um, I mean if the, if the system goes the disk goes with it and what good is it right so you want to keep the disk external so all the disks are put into a disk array and then everybody connects to it somehow so the disk array has a, has generally two controllers all the disks are connected to the to both controllers and similarly the computers connect by two ways to the controller just like the switches and and the other thing we saw this way if if any controller goes away or if any host goes away the information is all still there and um, this is just the opposite of what we would call j bars j bars means just a bunch of disks just a bunch of disks is what we do at home and you know in other places where we really don't have any organization to the disk we have a whole bunch of disks that we connect and disconnect and put here and there so that is j bars so in data centers we don't use j bars we use disk arrays all right and um, there are three ways we access these disks either block access which means we tell them that please read this sector number that number you know so on and so forth a block size is defined generally by number of sectors each sector is generally <laughs> 512 bytes you might read you know 4 16 64 any numbers of clusters like that generally powers up to and um, at a time and then you go just go block by block by block and that is most common second thing which we might do is the file access where we file is actually just a virtualization of the blocks because we don't want to read blocks I mean uh, in, in, in our daily work generally what we do is we, we put things in, into files so file is just for your viewing the, the disk don't understand file this only understand blocks right so there is something in between you and the disk that translates the files into blocks which is generally the operating system so the operating system knows for each file what block number it begins and where does it go so there is a whole linked list of blocks that the file contains and then the file also has metadata such as what date it was created when it was modified how long it is and what you know all those things what extension it has but the disk don't care right you understand that part the disk all they have is some blocks and blocks and blocks so right there is the virtualization so the files may not be contiguous and you need a file system which is either fat32 ntfs or you know there are many other names that you know in unix world right and the so that is basically how the you know an operating system basically use that particular system however they have designed to reach the files the third method is record access if you have a database then the databases are arranged by records so every person every customer every entity every equipment has a record in the database and you may want to reach that record again the record is some kind of overlay on the top of the blocks just like file system says but in the database world instead of having files they will rather read records and then there are just like ntfs and things like that there are database languages such as sql structured query language or open database connectivity odbc or java database connectivity jdbc these are the things that are used to access those records and um, so basically block access is really what you would call you know real access and then um, everything else is virtual even block access could be virtual in the sense that you will say well i want to read block number 243 but something translate that into disk number and on that disk where that block is all right so while you might think that there is a whole contiguous big disk but that may not be a big disk there might be little disk behind it okay so the storage people have been doing virtualization for a long time long, long before 
the computing people. I mean, not about the server people. All right. So the first disks that we sort of remember, you know, I mean, they were, my must have been old before that because they talk about drum disk, which I never used. But disk were SCSI disk. SCSI stands for SCSI, a small computer system interface. You connected one disk and then from that disk connected second disk and third disk. You could daisy chain as many as, you know, basically 16 or 8 or some number uh, of the disks. And it was parallel. So 8 to 16 devices on a bus, any number of the host, any number of hosts on the bus. So, I mean, those are 8 or 10, 16 connection point. You could have some disk and some, some host. So the bus is shared by many hosts and many disks. Generally, this is theoretically this possible, but generally each bus was just basically connected to one host and multiple disks. And I'm seeing all in the past tense because we don't use SCSI physically as such right now. I mean, as far as I know, but they might be used in the background, which I don't see. Okay. So they might be there. So it's, it's peer to peer. So you could even go from one disk to the other disk. You know, if the disk was smart enough, it could ask for data, but generally disks are not that smart. So you generally read to the host and write back to the some other disk. They are peer to peer, host to device, device to device, and host to host. All kinds of APIs are there, but most devices simply implement targets. Target means they are, you know, another body is slaves in the sense that they just listen. They don't order. The only person who can order is the, is the host. Host is the initiator. Each device has a SCSI bus has an ID. So the, the devices are numbered. You know, you have ID 1, ID 0, ID 5, ID 6, ID 7. And when, the, when on the bus, a command comes that please, device number 0, please read your sector number such and such. All right. So there is an ID. And each device may have multiple logical units inside it. So there is a, another level of virtualization right there is that you think it is one disk, but inside the disk there might be multiple disks. And they are called logical units. LUNs. Logical unit number is, is LUN. Logical unit number. And each LUN has what we call blocks and the blocks have LBA. Logical block address. And each logical block is typically 512 bytes. Which is a sector. Initially used the parallel interface. So SCSI was mostly parallel. And the problem with the parallel interfaces is that you cannot make them run very fast. The problem with the running very fast on a parallel track is that if 10 people are running in parallel and one person is slightly slow for whatever reason, the bits get all mixed up at the end. Difficult to synchronize. So it's better that only one person runs. So most of the things today we do are serial. In fact, most of the time we use the bus called USB. USB stands for what? Universal serial bus. And it goes very fast and it's going faster every day. And same thing for other disk devices. The disk storage is all between serial. So there is a serial SCSI. It is called SAS, serial attached SCSI, which is higher speed. Okay. So this is only historical. Actually, the parallel SCSI is mostly historical. I still have box full of SCSI cables and maybe devices, but they are so slow and so small in terms of the volume that I haven't touched them for years now. All right. The next thing that came after SCSI was ATA, 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 ATA. So basically, advanced technology attachment, it was designed for PCs. So when IBM came up with the PC idea, they came up with a new disk idea, and that, that disk was called PATA, P-A-T-A, parallel, parallel ATA. Okay, so this was parallel even then, 1986. However, the smart thing in this case was that the disk was smarter than before and therefore it has an electronics built into it. So it was not just magnetic media, but there was some little microprocessor in it. And so, so that was called integrated device electronics, IDE. So many of you at least have seen IDE disk. Has anybody heard IDE disk? Right? IDE. So IDE is where they are. I mean, ideas are not that old. IDEs actually are even newer than SCSI. And um, then they gave you about 133 megabits using parallel ribbon cables. And then a interface was extended so that it also could include CD-ROMs, DVD-ROMs, and tape drives, and that was called AT-API. So this is interface extension. By the way, all of these are ANSI standards. 
SCSI is and ATI is and everything else is. So, so this this AT API is a extension so that you know it's not just the disk; it could also be applied to CD-ROMs and tape drives. And then came serial ATA, serial SATA. Now SATA drives are what we use today. All right, everybody knows that, agrees that, right? When you buy, it says SATA one, SATA two, SATA three, SATA four, whatever it is. So they they started with six gigabit and now they go up from there. But they are serial. Okay, if you look at the cable, this has only four cables in this, or something like that, very small number of cables, and so some of them might be for control or something like that. And the thing is, one thing is this this NC committee follows is that every time they extend something, they just extend the number. So you have ATA, ATA2, ATA3, ATA4, like that. Those are just the version numbers. Similarly, SATA has SATA1, SATA2, SATA3, and I think right now we are up to SATA3, maybe 6, I don't know, but 3 is what I have used for sure. And um, and then there is eSATA, which is external SATA. So if you can have, if you want to connect a SATA device, many computers come with eSATA port. You can connect them externally. And there's the mSATA, mini SATA, which is even take less than what SATA takes. SATA is already very small to begin with. But anyway, so that is the current technology for general use in your home and business. Right? Everybody understand the SATA part. I mean, everybody has used the SATA disk. Any disk that you have right now on your computer is actually a SATA disk. Okay. So. But let's go back to the mainframes and um, and data center in a minute. So mainframes, is, while we were using SATA and all that, mainframes were using SCON and FICON. SCON is the enterprise system connection, which was designed by, by the way, IBM has been a leader in this field, so you will see IBM's name everywhere, all the way from beginning to the end. So IBM uh, actually designed the first storage drum memories. When the, when the when um, we had the first disk, it was designed by IBM. When we had the second disk, it was designed by IBM, and so on and so forth. So you know that is the case. Just like VMware in the virtualization world, IBM in the disk world. So SCAN is enterprise system interconnection. It was designed for mainframes, and the new thing here was that you could connect it to a switch. At that way, you could connect to multiple computers and multiple disks on this side. So you could have a switch in between. This was the invention. And they used fiber on this, and the fiber allowed 17 megabits for a long distance. So you could take you know, to long place in a data center. But with half duplex. Anybody knows what is half duplex? So it is one-way street. I mean, basically, one way in the sense that it's not only one way. It's it's um it's like when you are construction on a road, only one part will go, you go either this way or go that way. But you know, so that is half duplex. What is it? That is one way, totally one way. That is called what? Simplex. Simplex. All right. So and the other word is full duplex. So we have three ways: full duplex, simplex, and half duplex. So this is half duplex. Did I change? This is half duplex. That means you could just go one way or the other. And then they designed fiber connectivity, FICON, which do one more thing. It, it just not only allowed a switch, it allowed the network of switches. And, and then obviously they had single byte commands. And the single byte commands actually ca are coming from the days of SCSI. SCSI takes commands which are just one byte long. In one byte you can say whether you want to read, write, delete, whatever you want to do on that sector. And so they had single byte command set and they use fiber channel as a transport. So whatever they use as a transport, they propose that as a standard, and that was selected as a standard, and it's called fiber channel. Now fiber here is spelled different than the fiber everywhere else. You see fibers here and the fiber here, two different spellings. This is in American spelling, and this is European spelling. Okay, or you can call it English spelling. So there is, U.S. and English, and the reason the fiber channel name uses English spelling or the European English spelling, because that is where it came from. The IBM Europe must have designed it. Okay, so throughout this paper, you will see two spellings, and that is consistent with the whole literature. When you use fiber in for any other use, it is F-I-B-E-R. When you use it for fiber channel, it is 
F I B R E. So fiber channel is a name. So that's why it is you know basically it's a pro, it's a pronoun as opposed to a noun. So it has to be capitalized and it has to be spelled the way they spelled it.